Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. When Paul talks about the consolation in Christ, he is talking about the comfort given to us as believers. Consolation means alleviation of misery. The comfort of love in verse 1 comes from knowing that someone loves us. And lost people are not the children of God, contrary to what most people teach. Lost people are actually the children of the devil, and they have not experienced the comfort of love that comes from God the Father. God loved them enough to die for them, but they don't actually get in the love of Christ until they get saved. It is a common saying for someone to say, we are all God's children, but unsaved people aren't children of God. The Bible talks about other children. Matthew 23 and verse 15 calls them a child of hell. Job 41 31 calls them children of pride. Acts 13 10 calls them a child of the devil. Ephesians 2 and verse 2 calls them children of disobedience. So when you lead a soul to Jesus Christ, you are robbing Satan of his children. But if you are saved, you have the consolation in Christ. You worship the God of patience and consolation, as it calls him in Romans 15, 5. And 2 Corinthians 1, 5 says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Notice verse 1 of Philippians 2 talks about fellowship of the Spirit. Not only does it talk about consolation in Christ, it talks about fellowship of the Spirit. Since the Holy Ghost dwells in our bodies, we have fellowship of the Spirit. The moment we got saved, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 14 talks about us having communion with the Holy Ghost, which is fellowship. And Philippians 2.1, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any, fellowship of the Spirit, if any, bowels and mercies. The bowels and mercies talks about the feelings of Jesus Christ toward believers. God has always shown mercy by giving us the opportunity and free will to believe the gospel. God is showing us mercy. He is letting us escape the judgment that we deserve to face. Philippians 2 and verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Since we have the consolation in Christ, comfort of love, fellowship of the Spirit, bowels and mercies, we should be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And the verse is saying if we do these things, we fulfill Paul's joy. Revelation 17.13 shows how the enemies of God are of one mind with each other. Many men are like-minded in their plans to discredit the King James Bible. The only good way to get together and be as one mind is when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible. If those things aren't involved, then it will lead to you trying to get rid of God and the Bible. When wicked men get together, they push God out. But Bible-believing Christians should have one mind and should get together. And it is hard to have one mind if you have more than one Bible. Because if you have more than one Bible, you have more than one authority. And they all say something different. And if you don't have a King James Bible, you don't have a Bible. You have a satanic counterfeit. A New Age Bible version. Paul gets joy through Christians being in unity. He goes on to give instruction about how to be in unity. And the first step you need to take toward this is to put away strife and vain glory. Philippians 2.3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. 
Notice the first thing he talks about is strife. In the previous chapter, he talked about men preaching Christ of envy and strife. Some men are always causing strife. They want to be the greatest, so they will fight to get that position as the greatest. A man can get jealous of another person's ministry and begin to destroy the other man's ministry. This causes strife. Let's look at what the Bible says about self-righteous, proud, conceited people who like to cause strife among Christians. What are some of the characteristics of these men? First, we see that they are angry men. Proverbs 29:22 says, An angry man steereth up strife. And a furious man aboundeth in transgression. He could be angry because he wants authority or because he isn't getting the recognition that another person is getting. He also is a proud man. Proverbs 28, 25. He that is of, of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He believes that he is better than everyone else. He thinks he has all the right doctrine and that everyone else is wrong. Next we see that he is contentious. Proverbs 26, 21. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. These men will get in verbal arguments at the drop of a hat. And their primary purpose is defending the doctrine they teach, not for the purpose of defending truth, but actually for the purpose of defending their reputation. And Paul doesn't just mention strife, but also vain glory. These things can go hand in hand. Someone can be causing strife because he wants the glory for himself. He hates when others get praise. And his ministry is mainly about making himself look smart and not about getting glory to God. But we should let God get the glory in everything. Philippians 2.3 Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than, himself, than themselves. Okay, so we should get rid of strife and vainglory. But next, if we want to have unity... We should have lowliness of not mind and esteem others better than ourselves. Philippians 2.4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. How do we have lowliness of mind and esteem others better? We should consider the feelings of others. You know how it feels when someone doesn't include you or put you down personally? Maybe you should treat others how you want to be treated. Don't just consider your own wants and needs, but the wants and needs of others. Don't be so quick to criticize someone else because you aren't in their shoes and you don't know how you would handle the situation. The reason you don't esteem others better than yourself is because you think you are better. If you were in their shoes, you think you would be doing better than they are, but you could actually be doing the same thing or even worse than they're doing. Many of the men who call strife and seek after vainglory do those things because they see themselves better than other people. They see themselves better than someone who doesn't know as much Bible as they know. They see themselves better than someone who is doing something that they have convictions against. And maybe God just hasn't revealed to them yet. And the things He has revealed to you you're blessed that he's revealed them things to you and you shouldn't look down on other people because they don't know those things yet. Everyone is on a different level spiritually. How can you have unity if you're only out for yourself and think you're the best Christian in the group? Romans 12.10 says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus sought the needs of others and didn't do things to please himself. Romans 15.1-3 says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. 
For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. And then Philippians 2, 5 through 8 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took on him the form of a servant, and was made in, likeness, in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Because Jesus Christ was not for himself, and was doing things for your benefit, he took seven steps downward. Jesus Christ was in heaven, but came all the way down to this present evil world to die for your sins, and he took seven steps down. And the first step is he made himself of no reputation. He was a carpenter who was accused of being a glutton and a wine bibber. Isaiah 53 3 says he was despised. John 13 15 through 17 shows how he washed the saints' feet. He wasn't a religious big shot with a big house and nice clothes. He didn't even have a place to lay his own head. Number two, he took on the form of a servant. Number three, he took on the likeness of man. Number four, he was found in fashion as a man. He got hungry. As it talks about in Matthew 21, 18, he got thirsty. John 19, 28, he wept. John eleven thirty five, 35, he got tired. He sweated as great drops of blood. He experienced the physical weaknesses of man. He was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. He faced the temptation a man faces. Number five, he humbled himself. He was born in a manger and not a fancy hospital. He didn't have a higher education to brag about a degree. John 7, 15 says, And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? He also didn't have pride in his looks. He wasn't a person that people would see as having a beautiful outward appearance. Isaiah 53, 2 says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form or, nor comeliness, and we, we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus was humble and didn't brag in his abilities. John five nineteen says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Number six, he became obedient. And number seven, he died for us. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus, who was in the form of God, was also the image of God. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, If Jesus Christ isn't God in the flesh, then we'll we would be complete idol worshippers. We would be breaking a command God gave not to worship images. But he is God, and this is one of the greatest verses here in Philippians for the deity of Jesus Christ. And then of course, the new Bibles will change this verse, and it will read something like, He didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped. But Jesus Christ didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God. And many verses confirm the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. My favorite one being 1 Timothy 3.16 which says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. Even when Jesus was on earth, they knew he was claiming to be God by the things he said. John 5.18 says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father. And notice this key phrase, 
making himself equal with God. Since claiming God as his father and himself as his son makes him equal with God, even the devils knew he was equal with God. Look at Mark 3.11. It says, An unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. Calling him the Son of God made him equal. One of the wicked soldiers even said the same thing. It says in Mark 15.39, And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Back to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7, But made himself of no reputation, and took up on him the form of a servant, servant and was made in the likeness of men. Your rep reputation is what people think about you, but your character is what God sees. God looks on the heart. God sees what you're doing when no one else is around. The things you do when you're alone can show your true character. The same way Jesus took on him the form of a servant, we should be servants to others. Above all, a servant to the Lord Jesus Christ. Realize that Jesus Christ took steps down and made himself in a likeness of men to save your soul. Philippians 2.8 says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ was humble, obedient, and died for us on the cross. Verses like Colossians 1.14 show he plainly died by shedding his blood. And 1 Corinthians 15.1-4 is the gospel for us today. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if a man wants to be saved, he needs to realize he is a sinner. As the Bible calls everyone in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He needs to realize his own good works cannot save him. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Uh, Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Our own self-righteousness can't get us to heaven, so we need to turn from our own self-righteousness Turn to Jesus Christ, who is the only person who ever lived righteous, and rely on what he did on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. He died for us according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died by shedding his blood, Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. If we will turn from our own self-righteousness, put our faith in Jesus Christ, then we can be saved and have eternal life. But this has been the first section of Philippians chapter 2.